It's one of those events where you never forget where you were. Today, marking 35 years since seven people were killed in the Space Shuttle Challenger explosion. Our own Felicity Boss spoke with some Eau Claire residents on how they remember that day. Retired optometrist Norbert Mortz was running errands around Eau Claire on January 28, 1986. As an enthusiast of space travel, he stopped into an electronic store to watch the latest space shuttle take off. I remember quite vividly as the shuttle went up, I remember the last command from the pilot where he went into uh, full power. Uh, at that point, it was easy to see that there was a, some flames that engulfed the uh, shuttle momentarily, and then it split apart into three or four pieces. Moritz says he was stunned at what he was witnessing. The Challenger began to disintegrate just 73 seconds after takeoff and the seven people aboard were gone. Immediately I felt really sad for the families uh, that were actually watching it and knew that they had lost their loved ones. UW-Eau Claire professor Dr. Paul Thomas says he watched the events unfold from Australia just after midnight. And in the early days of the space shuttle program, there was this sense that it was a new form of space flight. It was safe. you safe enough to consider flying teachers on it. It was the teacher, Krista McAuliffe, that had gotten the world's attention for this liftoff. It was the first time someone who isn't an astronaut would be traveling to space. And the reason DeLong Middle School teacher Derek Black was watching when he was a student at Robbins Elementary School. And I think, like everybody, there was just a moment of what just happened. There was a teacher on there, which made it, I think, so significant because astronauts were just these things that... You, you don't have any experience with astronauts in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, but a teacher, um, and that, that made it a, a very big deal. It was an event that, for those watching, felt inexplicable and unforgettable. And Dr. Thomas says that tragedy occurred when the O-rings, which kept hot gases inside the solid rocket boosters, didn't seal properly due to the cold weather, something several NASA engineers had warned about.